Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. So we're going to begin here with this document from the FasterPaymentsCouncil.org. Hope you don't mind if I wear my gym gear. OK, um, this document is titled A Significant Year for the FPC and Faster Payments. Now, if you scroll down this document here, there's a very interesting little tidbit. All right. Uh, and it goes as such. It says, as an industry, we have come so far. Take RTP, for instance. This time five years ago, the network processed roughly 1,000 transactions. Last quarter, it recorded over 50 million real-time payments. Keep these numbers in mind. Or consider Zelle. It launched a little more than five years ago with just seven, seven, that's it, seven founding banks. Keep that in mind. As of last quarter, more than 1,800 banks were on board. Do you see what happens when you have regulatory clarity? Do you see what happens when uh, uh, they just unleash you? Imagine what's going to happen with Ripple and XRP. Just imagine, they said it started out with seven banks. We're starting out with hundreds of banks. Imagine how many more we're going to have. The implications of this are, are astounding. XRP is one of the absolute best uh, 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 protocol to ever hold on the planet. I think is a, uh, oh my goodness, more, more than 1,800 banks are on board with Zelle. I think, I think we're far superior to Zelle. Liquidity, uh, the liquidity hub, agnostic bridge currency, we bring so much more to the table, smart contracts, my goodness. And on top of that, we won't be dealing with retail very much. We're going to be dealing with interbank payments mostly, but we'll take money from anywhere. But what does it do to that price of XRP if we are on that same trajectory? If, right? First, let's get through this case, but I'm telling you, if we win this case, and I believe that we are, XRP is gonna go on a rampage, an absolute rampage. People are not going to expect it. I think that, listen, We've talked, we've spoken about some numbers. I've told you before, I believe it can go way past those numbers. Those are just conservative estimates. And I'm just giving ranges, uh, you know, just so we can deal with the psychology of what comes at those ranges. That's it. Those are not my predictions. Like that's my number where I think it can hit. And, and that's the, the max of where it can go. Not at all, not at all. Um, things are looking really good. So 1800 banks were on board covering about 80% of all US bank accounts. And later this year, we'll, we'll witness the launch of FedNow, an instant payments network that was just a concept five years ago. Now, we read documents recently on the FedNow system and how a lot of banks are rejecting the FedNow system. They don't want to use it. Um, there's a lot of things that they don't like about it. That's good for us <laughs> because they seem to have a love for XRP and Ripple. We're in a great position right now. Absolutely fantastic. Says, uh, while there is much to be celebrated, and keep in mind, let me pause a little bit. Keep in mind that um, Ripple is a part of the Faster Payments Council. It's witnessing all of this. It's helping everything to move forward. It's, in, it's, it's uh, uh, making itself self an integral part in the Faster Payments Council and the way that money moves in, in the United States. Faster Payments Task Force, the Digital Pound Foundation, the Digital Euro Association, Ripple finds itself in all of these key positions. The uh, advisory board for the IMF, we're everywhere. This is going to be powerful. I don't think anybody's ready for what's really going to happen. Just this is my humble opinion. It's not financial advice. All right. Uh, so I wanted to point that out. Now, let's move on to here. OK, because we have a few articles to get through. I appreciate every single one of you being here. If you if you enjoy any of this video, please click that like button down below. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I humbly ask you to do so. All right. So now. Of course, we have this tweet here from Ripple. And it goes as such, we are committing $1 million in XRP to support NGOs providing earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria through a relief fund on a on at crypto for char charity and are donating 250,000 US dollars in XRP and will also match two to one all crypto donations here up to 750,000 US dollars. You know what? Good job, Ripple. And you know what? This makes me respect Ripple a lot. It's not the first time they've done things for the people to help the people of the world. I like that. 
Um, it shows they're not just talk, they actually help people. Remember they helped, um, it was uh, Ripple and Algorand helped the children. It was somewhere in like California, I think maybe it was Oakland or something like that. They helped build something. They put up the money to help build something for the children to have fun. I respect that greatly. You know, um, and a few other things that they have done and now this. So this is a very, very good thing. Hopefully uh, the people out there are okay and they're doing well. Um, it says the fund supports four NGOs and donations are distributed equally at CARE, at Mercy Corps, at Rescue Org, are helping affected communities in Syria and Turkey by providing immediate cash, basic items such as household kits, dignity kits for women and girls, hygiene supplies and more. Uh, Chefs for Turkey, it says, uh, are distribu distributing hot meals in Turkey and Syria. They work with field kitchens, local chefs, and restaurants and food trucks to feed uh, survivors and first responders. Listen, I, we're all going to do what we can to help out. Um, and hopefully the people over there will receive what they need. I'm glad to see that Ripple is playing a part. We will also do our part. And I hope the people over there once again receive everything that they need so they will be okay. Now, so now let's move on to this next uh, article here. All right, so this article here is from you.today, all right? How's everybody doing doing out there? You doing okay? I hope you are. Hope you are. I'm feeling good today. Doing all right. Went to the gym, you know. I was competitive as usual. Somebody tried to raise their treadmill up a little bit. I raised my treadmill up. Then they raised their treadmill up a little bit more. Looking over at me. Raised, I raised my treadmill up a little bit more. Then they raised their treadmill up a little bit more. I'm like, I'll go to the max. I raised my treadmill up all the way. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to win at everything I do. I'm trying to win. It's all in fun. But I'm going to win. <laughs> and guess what? That person didn't raise their treadmill up higher than mine. Of course, now my legs are paying for it. Holy smokes, feel like I'm walking through cement, but it was worth the victory. I'm willing to do what it takes for the victory. Anyway, um, <laughs> so this this article is titled <laughs> Pro Ripple Lawyer says XRP haters will start praying Ripple beats the SEC. So uh, let's read this little tidbit here. Web3 lawyer Jesse Hines has taken to Twitter to show his support for the Ripple fintech giant in his legal war against the U.S. securities regulator. He tweeted that there are positive aspects even of the SEC's move against Ripple. Is that so? According to his tweet, the negative part here is, quote, all of it. OK, all right. See where you're going. That was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, um, hey, don't make me laugh while I'm reading articles. All right. The positive part is that Ripple has a better chance to get a court resolution than any other company the SEC may sue. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. I think we all agree with that, though. We've been winning along the way, uh, minor victories along the way, hopefully leading, leading to a major victory. That's what we're waiting on. Um, and if we get that victory, it's off to the races like no one has ever seen before. I'm ready for it. I'm expecting XRP to explode, XRP, uh, XLM to take off. Um, Announcements, the massive announcements they're sitting on to be to be made. Companies jumping in. I'm expecting all of that. Let's continue on here. It says uh, now he expects that even those who hate Ripple and XRP will begin, quote, hoping and praying that Ripple wins against the SEC. Many in the crypto community believe that Ripple is now fighting back for the whole crypto space in order to get the SEC to implement clear regulatory rules for crypto companies in the U.S. I always said since the beginning of this channel that they all should have come together. The tribalism must end the clans, clansmanship, whatever, however you want to phrase that, must end, the people must band together, but they did not. And so now you're going to have to go through a little bit of fire. It's just a little bit of fire. Um, they can still fight back, companies can still fight back, but yes, uh, it's never too late. They should definitely back Ripple and support Ripple in every possible way. And a lot of companies have, to be fair. We have so many amicus briefs, it's unbelievable, you know. Uh, right now, everything's in the judge ha judge's hands, and uh, I believe we will come out on top. Hopefully, we will. No guarantees, of course. But even without the United States, we're still going to make a run anyway. Solid, solid run. Regulatory clarity is, is rolling out across the world. Which, uh, by, by the way, little by little, but by the way, I recently, uh, released a few short videos earlier today 
uh, you know, some people like the shorter video, so I try to put out a few, okay? One of them was XLM video, Quant video, LCX, just uh, giving my opinion. Well, the Stellar, was, the Stellar video was more of research-based. Um, but a few people got in there early on those early videos. I want to thank them. So I'm going to give them a shout out for the people that I saw. Okay. It was a busy morning. I tried to get in the comment section when I could. Okay. So I want to give a shout out to, uh, love life 22, Osti, appreciate every single one of you, Mark Brown, crawfish XRP and Marky Mark. Hey, hey, wait a minute. That name sounds familiar. Right? So these are the people that I saw. I just want to give them a shout out. Okay. Because I don't, um, because there's so many videos I'm trying to put in a lot of work lately. I may not have enough time to put in all of the different um, champions of the day for different videos. I'm only going to do it for the, the evening XRP videos. That's, that's where I'm going to keep the champion of the day's day activities. So now let's move on to another article here. So this is another article from you.today and it's titled XRP jumps five, it was a five percent on this positive news details. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this, see what they're talking about here. XRP jumped over 5% to trade at 38 cents at the time of this writing. In the last 24 hours, XRP was among the top 10 purchase tokens among the 100 biggest BSC whales, per whales stats data. XRP started to climb at a, at, after reaching a low of 36 cents on February the 13th as investors bought the dip. Yep, a lot of people are always going to buy the dip. I think a lot of us are, are pretty comfortable with what we have so far, but you can never have too much XRP. You can never have too, like, like, like let's say you have a little bit of XRP. This is not financial advice. I'm just sharing my thoughts. That's all. That's all. Okay. I'm here for the bank's money, not yours. So it doesn't matter to me. You can sell all your XRP, all your XLM. It would not matter to me at all. You could buy some, it would not matter to me either, okay? I'm a long-term holder. Now, um, there's a lot of people feel like they have too little XRP. I don't. I never feel like there's too little XRP. If you have 10 XRP, I think you're doing okay. 100 XRP, I think you're doing okay. 500, however much. Like, something is better than nothing. That's how I feel. Something's better than nothing, all right? Um, so I just, I just want to put that out there because some people make others feel like they have to have a ton, a ton of everything. It's like... No, no, just you have to do what's best for you and make your own decisions, all right? You know, you know what's best for you and your family. Never do anything that's going to get you into trouble. You understand? Not advice. All right, all right. Let's get back to the articles, right? So it says the move continued reaching intraday highs, 38 cents on February the 15th. A positive indication is seen in the RSI, which is slightly tilting upward and making a move toward the neutral level of 50. All right. They do a lot of good analysis here. Make sure you head over to u.today. Check them out. All right. If you want to hear the rest of this, they have a lot going on. It says uh, So now just this little tidbit from the next section, because I don't want to read too much of their analysis. Okay. It says hope arises on X on current XRP sales. XRP enthusiasts. Bill Morgan shared a screenshot of part of Ripple's Q4 2022 report that pointed out that Ripple sold XRP only in connection with on-demand liquidity transactions. Very good thing. Uh, it says here, this is the actual tweet. Ripple claims it is true. I was uh, extracting from its market reports. It would explain why the SEC never saw an injunction on current sales. Hmm, interesting. Not now being offered to anyone who could be regarded as an investor since before the lawsuit started. John Deaton, if true, there won't be an injunction, no disgorgement, but a fine. Hmm. But as you know, I think the chances of a jury trial are higher than most people believe. I, I, I feel that way as well, just from just from reading the documents and seeing how everything is going. But I hope it ends here. I, I'm ready for us to all move forward. But, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the judge, the honorable judge does. We'll see. All right. Now, let's move on to this here. Another article, right? This is how you know they're coming for they're coming for crypto. They want people out of there. That's unfortunately, some of us aren't going anywhere. You're listen, you're literally if for someone like me, you're literally going to have to force us out force me out. I'm not going anywhere. That's not going to happen. I'm not taking a step back. No, I'm only going forward and I'm coming forward no matter what. But let me read this little article here, right? I'm sorry. I'm giving you the knife hand. This article is titled X S E C official on crypto as if anyone should trust this person. 
Like this person doesn't get on the phone with their old buddies that they were working for, working for and with for decades. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't trust that. I wouldn't trust that. It says X S E C official on crypto. Get out now. Right. We're supposed to listen to you and just get out of crypto now. And don't get me wrong. If there's going to be a major crash or something coming, um, anyone who has something in crypto that's going to be detrimental to them, it probably will be wise for them to protect their value. I'll just say that. But listen, some of us, we don't have anything in this detrimental. I'm not going anywhere. No, no, no. So, but let's read this little tip here. It says, former secretaries, uh, sorry, secretaries, former Securities and Exchange Commission official John Reed, John Reed Stark has urged cryptocurrency investors to, quote, get out now, of course, in response to a Bloomberg article detailing the increasingly aggressive U.S. regulatory stance toward the industry, which is hilarious. They're supposed to help the people and they're hurting the people, but we know that that's, that's what they usually do. Stark who now runs a cyber consultancy, tweeted that the crypto ecosystem is under siege, unquote, as a result of, quote, relentless regulatory actions that could see the industry pushed to the fringes of finance. And that's when, and if that were to occur, that's right when all the banks and all the businesses get in and take over. Then later on, they let the people have the scraps. This is always the way that it is. Maybe this time it'll be different. You know, they have a few warriors on the front lines. We'll see how it works out. We'll see. We're making history here, folks. We're in history books already. They're going to write stories about us. We may not have our individual names known. Maybe some of us will, but that doesn't matter. But we're making history right now. We're making an impact on the future, a real impact. Uh, let's continue on here. This battle will be remembered. It says the Bloomberg article cited stark claims that the, the collapse of ftx and the potential for the crypto the next quote crypto disaster to have even more severe consequences are the driving force behind the ongoing crackdown there's a lot behind the ongoing crackdown but i'll save my opinion for another time but you don't scare me you don't scare a lot of us we've been through a lot a lot of hell the fire doesn't scare us anymore now let's move on to this next article here because we have some Algorand News. Algorand's doing a fantastic job as usual, in my humble opinion. Um, I enjoy what they're doing. So, wow. You know Napster is on is on Algorand. They have a lot of music offerings. Napster, Dequency, LimeWire, and there's another one also. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry about that. My apologies. It says, Napster makes its first Web3 move. Talk to me, Napster. Oh, yeah. You sweet, sweet. Music offering on Algorand that could boost that price. Oh, yeah. It says, music streaming service Napster is banking on the Web3 and digital music ecosystem to be a foundational aspect of its next act. Act The company, which in September reemerged in its last incar latest incarnation with former Roblox music executive John Vla Va Vlaso Vlasopolis, sorry about that, as CEO has acquired, has acquired, there's a lot of acquisitions going on right now. This is very good. Has acquired Mint Songs, an NFT marketplace that helps music artists build Web3 communities, as well as Mint Songs and provide exclusive art for their fans to own and trade. Terms of the deal were not disclosed. Mint Songs co-founder and CTO Gary Hughes will stay on in an advisory, advisory role. Sorry, I had a little air in my chest. Apologize. Uh, an advisory role to help integrate Mint Songs technology into the platform and offer guidance as Napster rolls out products and services that previously were on the Mint Songs roadmap. Former head of product Nate Pham is joining Napster to lead Web3 Initiative. So everything is looking good here. We have a little bit more Algorand news. They're doing a lot of good things in my humble opinion. So now <clears throat> this is on Medium.com. This article is titled exciting news rand gallery has acquired nft explorer another offering built on algorand with another acquisition there's a lot of big movements happening on algorand will the people see it i don't know will they take note of algorand actually being one of the best i don't know i don't really require it no one really requires it algorand's going to take off that's not financial advice I mean, they have enough partnerships. They have a thriving ecosystem. They continue to expand. They have powerful leadership. They have everything you could possibly need. Exciting news. Rand Gallery has acquired NFT Explorer. Ross Murray Jones and Agash Navaranjan, 
The duo behind RAND are delighted to announce the acquisition of NFT Explorer. There has always been a special symbiotic relationship between NFTX and RAND, which will meaningfully strengthen under one umbrella. Both platforms will evolve into an NFT experience unmatched by other chains and thus play a, a preeminent role in the growth of Algorand, the indelible protocol we call home. So uh, another acquisition happening. This is very good for Algorand. I hope they continue to do well. I think we have one more piece of Algorand news, actually. Oh, yeah. So we're going to end off with this as far as Algorand news. Um, they released this tweet here and it says, thank you, GBBC Council, GB, GBB Council. <laughs> My word, uh, for featuring our recent partnership with T-Hub Hyde. We are just getting started in India. Algorand's getting deep with India, becoming an integral part of the new financial system in Web3 over there. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this, um, all of this pans out over the coming decade or so because India is growing rapidly, rapidly. See, all of these places where Algorand is building, Stellar as well, Ripple also, most of the bank coins, they're places that are rapidly growing. So that capital is also going to grow. The need and necessity to use traceability, move payroll more effectively, uh, move capital more effectively with, with uh, digital wallets, so to speak, uh, different types of digital uh, assets uh, issued like st uh, stable coins for this, you know, tokenization of value for that, that's going to be flowing all over the place, all right? Sorry, I'm not so eloquent when I just put that, the way I phrase that, but you get what I'm saying. This is going to be very, very good. So now let's move on from here, right? <laughs> Before I stumble over some more words. Okay. So this is from XDC. Keep doing a good job. I see the major things you're doing, XDC. All those banks, you're the only one on that trade commission. Uh, wow. So XDC Foundation put this out. It says, check out at Troy's Woods, Troy's Wood of Impel Official, getting ready for GT Reviews, GTR Mena event in Dubai. Boom. Everybody's getting deep in the Mena region for a reason. You saw what Hedera put out the other day. Mena region is trying to become the, the focal point for crypto and they have the capital to do it. They have the capital, they have the resources, they have commodities that can be tokenized, they have oil. My goodness, they're doing it all. And they're pulling all the bank coins there. Pay attention. Ripple is deep in the main arena, very deep. Stellar's deep there. Uh, you have Hedera, very deep now, very deep. They even had a picture with the Royals. I, I'm going to keep saying that to drive it home how powerful Hedera has become in a short time. And now you have XDC there. And when XDC is somewhere, they're there to close deals. They've been making major moves. They are a very serious company. And I'm telling you now, people don't see the explosion coming with XDC. They don't. But what can you do? It says, our leadership at Troy's Wood at the XDC Dubai office getting ready for our at GT review co-sponsorship of GTR hashtag Mena. Um, we're going to keep an eye, continue to keep an eye on XDC happenings. Everything's looking good as far as I'm concerned, all right, as far as what I see. So now let's go here, all right? We have a little bit of VeChain news. I think we're making some good time here. Um, so this is from the VeChain Foundation. And it goes as such, what do a revolutionary nanomaterial graphene and a groundbreaking new technology have in common? Of course, I think they're talking about VeChain, obviously, this is their event. Uh, find out on March 4th at The Hive, a Web3 slash sustainability summit curated by VeChain. That's not the big part here. Let me scroll down here. Can you guess who they're going to have here? This shows you how respected and how big and how powerful VeChain is becoming. They are the traceability protocol. QR codes, scanning data sent anywhere across the world in seconds. My goodness, you want to know where that milk came from? How long it, it, it was on a truck? Uh, what farm it came from? VeChain can do it all. Uh, so it says here, introducing the Hive's next speaker, Nobel Laureate, Sir Constantine Novoselov. Novoselov. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
my goodness, these long names are really, really giving me a tough time. But they have a Nobel laureate speaking at their event. And I will, I'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to be doing with graphene. And this is going to get interesting, folks. Uh, V-Chain is another one I've talked about for a long time, since the beginning. There's only a few utility coins I really enjoyed and have spoken about. V-Chain is one. There's a few I don't speak about too often. If you remember in the beginning of the channel, I spoke about GRT. If you go way back in the beginning of the channel, I talked about GRT, right? And their claim of, of trying to become like the Google of blockchain, GRT. Uh, Matic, remember? Remember, go, you can go way back and watch those videos. And I made the call and look at what Matic is doing today. Hmm? And then the other one was VeChain. Oh yeah, Batcoin also, but you saw what happened with Batcoin. Went parabolic quite a few times, didn't it? We made a lot of good calls, folks. VeChain is, is another one. It looks like they're in for something big in the future, but we'll keep our eyes open and we will see. So now let's continue on here, all right? So, I wanted to cover this article here being crypto because I have been talking about things related to this, how the banks are trying to take over DeFi. Let's see if they say something similar in this. OK, so the article title here on beingcrypto.com is it's titled, Do Banks Now Have Their Sights Set on DeFi? So let's read this little tidbit and find out. It says, as decentralized finance rises in popularity, experts like Mark Cuban believe that traditional banks should be running scared. They were running scared for a while, but the Bank of International Settlement stepped in. They did their research. They put out like three or four really thorough documents. You can still read them on the BIS.org website, okay? Uh, where they broke down DeFi and how you actually, is, it's not decentralized. It actually can be, it actually is quite centralized. And how they could control DeFi and how they could coexist with DeFi. So, no, they're not, they're not running scared anymore. Let's continue on. DeFi provides most of the facilities uh, of traditional financial institutions, such as lending and borrowing, earning yield on investments, etc. But in the rapidly growing area of tech, firms must adapt to the latest innovations to survive. Hence, banks have rapidly shown interest in DeFi. Exactly. According to a Bloomberg report, the Japanese bank Nomura is investing in DeFi protocol Infinity. Oh, is that so? Nomura gets the DeFi exposure after launching Digital Asset Division. The Japanese bank uh, launched its Digital Asset Division, Laser Digital, in March 2022. Later, Laser Digital announced a trading division for institutional clients in November 20, 2022. Now, Nomura Bank's Digital Asset Division marks its footprint in DeFi with investment in an institutional lending and borrowing protocol, Infinity. None of the parties have yet revealed the details such as the investment size. Well, obviously, it's going to be something that gives them power, so it has to be significant, right? Um, once again, read, that, read those documents where the Bank of International Settlements tells the people DeFi is not decentralized. It's interesting, right? Credit Suisse leads investment round for digital assets company Taurus, and Credit Suisse would need it. They would need, they need something bad. Bloomberg reports that the, the Switzerland-based digital assets infrastructure developer raised $65 million from Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank AG, PicTech Group, uh, Arab Bank, Switzerland LTD, and Investis Holding SA. With the help of Taurus, Credit Suisse aims to expand its digital assets offerings. Daniel Guerrero, the head of digital assets at Credit Suisse said, the fact uh, we are making such an investment is a clear testament that, the, that there is a future in digital assets. It is part of the overall strategy of Credit Suisse. It's just one more, uh, it's just one more way you're seeing the legacy system and the new financial, financial system congeal. That's all that's happening here. Um, they're accepting, well, well the, small banks, the small banks are still a little rogue. They, they're still a little bit upset. The big banks are on board, right? And more and more of them are coming on board with the idea of being layered with the new financial system and just reaping the benefits of it. That fear is going away as more research is being done and more congealing is happening, right? Which is good for us because all that money will flow through the bank coins, theoretically speaking, and that definitely can move that price, right? Okay. So um, now let's move on to another article here. All right. 
So we're, we're going to do a little bit of stock news. This is from TradingView.com. They're doing a great job over there. Make sure you check them out. All right. So the Dow Jones, 200-point uh, losses and was down more than 60 points on Tuesday, while the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 turned green and added 0.1% and 0.5% respectively. Experiencing a volatile session as investors were digesting the latest U.S. inflation data while reassessing the outlook for monetary policy. The wave of volatility in equity markets came after the closely watched U.S. CPI reading for January landed at 6.4%, the lowest since October 2021, still above economists' forecast of 6.2%. The report came on the heels of a blockbuster U.S. jobs report earlier this month, suggesting that getting inflation under control will take more time than expected. On the policy side, Dallas Fed President Lori Logan and Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin were among the latest policymakers to warn that the U.S. Central Bank will need to keep gradually raising interest rates to tame inflation. Didn't I say that? I said that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, would beg to differ and definitely the Fed would beg to differ. However, the, the Fed is, is very flexible, right? So, we, we, you know, we'll keep an eye on this. So let's close out with a little bit of gold news, right? So this is from shiftgold.com, all right? Chinese gold imports hit highest level since 2018. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder what they're loading up for. China imported 1,343 tons of gold in 2022, the highest import level since 2018. Total gold imports for the year were up 64% over 2021. China ranks as the world's biggest gold consumer. Gold demand in China picked up during the, the last half of the year as the government relaxed some of its redacted restrictions. China imported 157 tons of gold in December to close out a strong H2. The World Gold Council called it a tale of two halves. Quote, the on and off lockdowns in major cities during the first half of hurt first half suppressed local gold demand and imports. Right. So now let's continue on here on here. According to the WGC, strength in the Chinese gold market continued into January. The Shanghai, Shanghai. Uh, London gold price premium charted a mild rebound, putting a stop to the declining trend since last October. Stronger gold demand during January was key. A recovery in the Chinese economy after it was strangled by government redacted restrictions helped to drive the rebound in the gold market. China experienced a redacted peak in December. According to the World Gold Council, Chinese economic activities revived in January. That drove a boom in the gold market. I'm going to keep that. We'll keep that in mind for future reference. So that drove a boom in the gold market. According to the China Gold Association, during the 15 day period from the Chinese New Year Day to the Spring Lantern Festival, Chinese gold consumption was up by 18 percent year on year. Whew. Gold withdrawals from the Shanghai uh, Gold Exchange totaled 140 tons in January. That was a modest month-on-month -month decline of two tons and 25% lower than January 2022. But the lower number was primarily due to the 2023 Chinese New Year holiday that limited January to just 16 trading days. That was the fewest since 2012 when compared with the pre previous Chinese New Year months. January's withdrawal total was 12% higher than the 10-year average. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.